Last week, FDA officials and other government witnesses were called to a Senate committee hearing on the safety of bisphenol A, or BPA. That's a chemical used in a variety of plastic products from baby sippy cups to eyeglasses. When Senator Schumer and five of his colleagues introduced legislation calling for a ban on BPA and all kids' products, they used information uncovered by the investigative reporting of the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. How the paper's reporters got that story is the subject of this report from our colleagues at Exposé, narrated by Sylvia Chase. There is a chemical contained in many plastics that is also found in 93% of us. It's called bisphenol A. Bisphenol A is actually the chemical used to make polycarbonate plastic. It's the hard, clear plastic used in baby bottles. And it also is the lining of all metal cans made in the United States. Beer cans, soda cans, food cans. And this chemical leaches out of all of these products into any kind of food or beverages that come in contact with it. Bisphenol A, BPA, is what is known as an endocrine disruptor. Studies have shown that in lab animals it causes breast and testicular cancer, diabetes, and hyperactivity. Its effects on humans are not entirely known. The manufacturers of BPA and their lobbyists say it is safe. U.S. regulators agree. One team of investigative journalists decided to ask why. When I was a graduate student, I read this article in The New Yorker. Th the theory was that there were chemicals in the environment that were um, somehow uh, messing with the reproductive system. And then... Endocrine disruptors were first identified as the cause of wildlife abnormalities in the early 90s. The Environmental Protection Agency and the Food and Drug Administration, though, repeatedly reassured the public that BPA, at least, was safe. The agencies cited studies done in the 1980s. But prompted by an outcry from advocacy groups, President Bill Clinton signed the Food Quality Protection Act in 1996. That same year, the Safe Drinking Water Act was amended. The combined legislation promised a chemical screening program of endocrine disruptors to be overseen by the EPA. The goal was to determine whether or not they were dangerous to human beings. 1998. The EPA, headed by Carol Browner, sets a deadline to fast-track the testing of 15,000 chemicals suspected as endocrine disruptors. 1999. The EPA misses the deadline. The Natural Resources Defense Council sues the agency to enforce screening. 2001. A new administration takes office. Christine Todd Whitman becomes head of the EPA. 2003. Two more suits are brought against the EPA, one by a coalition of environmentalists and advocacy groups, the other by the attorneys general of four states. The suits attempt to force the agency into compliance with the Food Quality Protection Act. 2007, 11 years after the laws were passed, the EPA had yet to screen its first chemical. The reporters eventually learned that the EPA, though it hadn't tested a single one of the 15,000 chemicals promised, had already spent some $80 million on the endocrine disruptor program. And here's tens of millions of dollars of tax dollars being spent and not a single chemical has ever been tested to this day. So um, the more they dug, the more they found. The team also learned that only in 2008 did the agency plan to screen its first chemicals, just 73 of them and not including BPA. And they wouldn't even be finished with that until 2010. The reporters wanted to know just what was the science saying. The journalists found two camps, each with its own view of the science of bisphenol A. One includes Dr. Frederick von Saal. In our test system with human breast cancer cells, what we found with bisphenol A was very different than what happens with the natural hormone produced in your ovaries. Vamsal is a biologist at the University of Missouri. He has studied bisphenol A for more than a decade. In 1997, a team of researchers led by Vamsal published a peer-reviewed study 
showing that when BPA was introduced to human breast cancer cells, it penetrated the cells and made them grow rapidly. And as a result of that, we got interested that maybe this chemical was a lot more potent than anybody had previously thought. And so we did a study where we administered it to mice and found that at a dose 25,000 times below what anybody had ever tested, we caused damage to the entire developing male reproductive system. Chemical companies who make or have made bisphenol A say that people have little or nothing to fear from what are known as endocrine disruptors. In defense of the safety of bisphenol A, the companies and the ACC cited studies they funded themselves. One EPA biologist, L. Earl Gray Jr., charged the industry with flooding the EPA with studies. David Rosner, professor of history and public health at Columbia University, explained why, telling the paper chemical makers have learned that if you play on the uncertainty of danger, you're going to be able to stop regulatory action. It surprised me too how much rancor there was about this chemical. I mean, you would talk to some scientists and, um, you know, they would tell you that the sky was falling. Um, you would talk to others and they would tell you that it was fine and then the, the, in, in the same sort of breath they would cut the first scientist down personally. Before she had become a journalist, Suzanne Rust had been a graduate student in biological anthropology. Now the paper would call on her experience with scientific methodology. I had enough um, sort of background in endocrinology where I was fairly familiar with the terms they were using. So Mark was like, well, why don't we just do our own analysis? And so he turned to Suzanne and said, do you think you could do this analysis? Yeah, she thought she could. In all, Rust evaluated 258 studies done over two decades involving lab animals with spines, the type scientists consider most relevant to human beings. Right away, you could see that 80% of these studies all found that this chemical caused harm. More than half the studies, 168 of them, evaluated bisphenol A at low doses. The vast majority of those, 132 of the 168, showed harm to lab animals. And Rust would report, nearly three-fourths of the studies that found the chemical had no harmful effects were funded by industry. Rust's overall conclusion, an overwhelming majority of the studies found BPA to be harmful in lab animals, causing breast and testicular cancer diabetes, hyperactivity, obesity, low sperm counts, miscarriage, and other reproductive failures. Studies paid for by the chemical industry were much less likely to find damaging effects or disease. They would report on one panel funded in part by the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences. It consisted of experts who directly studied the chemical. That panel found in 2007, quote, great cause for concern about BPA. Meanwhile, the National Toxicology Program, the NTP, was in the process of coming up with its own brief on bisphenol A. In 2007, the NTP convened a panel composed of scientists who didn't directly study BPA, but would evaluate the work of those who did. Among the panel's conclusions, while for pregnant women, fetuses and children, there is some concern about neural and behavioral effects. There is minimal concern for prostate effects, potential accelerated puberty. There is negligible concern for birth defects and malformation. For adults, the concern was essentially negligible. In light of her own findings, Suzanne Rust wondered how the panel had arrived at those conclusions. Among the paper's findings, some of the studies the NTP panel considered were chosen by a consultant with links to firms that made bisphenol A. The panel rejected academic studies that found BPA harmful, citing inadequate methods, but accepted industry-funded studies using the same methods to conclude the chemical does not pose risks. It also accepted two studies finding no harm, funded by former BPA maker General Electric. They were done some 30 years ago. Neither was peer-reviewed. And the panel didn't accept any studies that found BPA harmful at low doses. Why? The paper reported the panel's chairman, Robert Chapin, said that once the panel weeded out studies it believed had been done poorly, no studies remained that showed effects from low doses. We have not gotten a, a single demand for retraction, no 
clarification request from the chemical industry. They've had nothing that they could come.